What up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And I am continuing my coverage of the G1 Climax 32, Night 5, that happened on July 24th, 2022. As always, if you enjoy these reviews, make sure to like and comment and share. Make sure to tell a friend, let them know that I cover wrestling and they could definitely be part of all the readers over at marieshadows.substack.com where you will find all original wrestling content delivered directly to your inbox every single day at 10 a.m. So let's jump right into the review of G1 Climax 32, Night 5 on July 24, 2022. We start with D-Block, El Fantasmo versus Yudro. So this is basically House of Torture slash Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. And this is pretty interesting because Yudro is also known as the Tokyo Pimp. And he has a wonderful, very beautiful valet named Peter. And she accompanies him to the ring. And then when the match starts, Yudro basically pimps her out to El Fantasmo. If El Fantasmo loses, he ends up getting Peter. That is what Yudro was telling him. So in the beginning of this match, they fool around with like shenanigans of El Fantasmo laying down for Yudro, but it's not going to be that simple, that easy. So after El Fantasmo does a roll up to try to get a victory over Yudro, Yudro kicks out. And then now we have our match. We get wrestling between the two for a little bit in their match until we get distractions. Peter tries to be a distraction, but it doesn't really work. Show comes out and Yudro uses the wrench, but the wrench gets taken away. And then Yudro tries using his walking stick to hit El Fantasmo, but that doesn't necessarily work. El Fantasmo knows all of Yudro's tricks, know all of House of Torture's tricks. So that's why this time around with the shenanigans from show, it wasn't working. And so El Fantasmo is still focused on fighting Yudro. Like he's very serious in this match. Those distractions, he's just brushing them off. And then it comes down to El Fantasmo punching Yudro in the dick rolling him up and get the one, two, three for the win. The referee didn't see anything. So El Fantasmo gets his two points in this G1 Climax 32 match. Now, after the match, Peter is checking on Yudro. However, ELP extends his hand and has her stand up and kisses the top of her hand. And both of them walk out of the arena and back to their hotel. So not only does so not so not only does El Fantasmo win his match, he also gets the girl at the end. Our second match is A Block, Jeff Cobb representing United Empire versus Bad Luck Fale representing Bullet Club. This was a monster, a monster match, man. Two big wrestlers fighting to get two points in the G1 Climax to move up and fight in the semifinals and eventually win. This was two behemoths fighting. They were both evenly matched, evenly strong, and really trying to outdo the other one. For the longest, both of these guys have been talking shit to each other. And this was the match where all that shit talking was put to rest. And there was respect on both of their names for what they were doing in this match. The kind of risk that they were taking. Jeff Cobb is not afraid to take risk. We see it whenever he does a standing moonsault that looks so beautiful. We see it whenever he catches his opponent out of somewhere meaning maybe like the corner or something that just catches you 
off guard and he does a tour of the island or he does a spin cycle on you. So Jeff Cobb does manage to do tour of the island on Bad Luck Fale. Bad Luck Fale is a very tall dude. He has weight to him. He has power to him. And he is definitely still an OG of Bullet Club. But that doesn't mean anything. Jeff Cobb picked him up, spun him around, and brought him right back down on the canvas for Tour of the Islands. Went over to cover him. One, two, three, and Jeff Cobb picks up the victory over Bad Luck Fale. Jeff Cobb gets two points in the G1 Climax 32. Our next match is from B Block. Taichi versus Sonata. This was an okay match. I didn't expect anything profound to happen between Taichi and Sonata. Sonata does really have good matches depending on who he's fighting. Taichi has good matches too, again, on who he's fighting. This matchup was a little comedic in the beginning by having a peck popping match. Just to wow the female fans in the crowd. But then after we started having a actual wrestling match where Taichi comes in with a deep cobra twist because he could not throw Sonata. So he decides to put that move on. Sonata gets to the ropes. We have a clean rope break. Sonata comes in with a drop kick. And then Taichi recovers to do an axe bomber to Sonata. Sonata comes in with Skull's end, but then we get a choke counter. The only cool thing that Taichi does in this match is does a choke takedown on Sonata. So Sonata gets to the ropes. He's preparing to jump off of the ropes in the corner. However, Taichi sort of does a thrust move towards Sonata's neck and thus created a choke takedown. We get a roaring elbow, a tiger suplex, and Taichi kicks out from Sonata attempting to pin him. Taichi comes in with a Saido suplex. Sonata kicks out at one. Sometimes Sonata could be very ambitious and persistent. And I don't honestly think a member from LIJ being Sonata wants to lose from a member being from Suzuki Gun, which is Tai Chi. Sometime later in the match, there is a top rope choke slam. Sonata counters that with the O'Connor roll. Tai Chi kicks out. We get a TKO. Tai Chi kicks out of that. We get Sonata's combination of a neck crank submission. Followed by a moonsault. However, Tai Chi has the knees up as a counter, and Sonata kicks out of that. At this point, Tai Chi gets a little bit desperate. Everyone in the company knows that Sonata has that fractured orbital bone. It should be healed by now, but fractures in the face never really truly heal. So Tai Chi goes for that orbital. Tai Chi goes for that orbital bone, tries to create some pain on it by digging his fingers in Sonata's face. However, that does not stop Sonata from kicking out from the attempted pin by Tai Chi. We get some elbows to Sonata and he kicks out again. However, Sonata goes and does the O'Connor roll again and has that bridge secured. One, two, three. Sonata picks up two points for the G1 Climax 32. Our main event for the G1 Climax 32 Night 5 is C Block Naito versus Tanahashi. This match is as old as time. Naito and Tanahashi has fought each other for years. Tanahashi is known as the light and the hope of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He has definitely pulled us out of the dark and uncertain times of this pandemic. Naito is all about being tranquilo. 
Naito is all about baseball. Naito is your brother that sometimes you love to hate. And Naito puts on some pretty good matches when he wants to, and depending on who he's going after. This match is no different. This match was more like playing chess than checkers. Even though Naito was working on Tanahashi's neck, focusing on the neck. So that way, when he delivers Destino or Valencia, he will gain victory. However, Tanahashi always has some type of move up his sleeve, some type of counter. And that's what he's been doing in this whole match. Naito may be two steps ahead, but Tanahashi is just three steps ahead. While Naito was working on Tanahashi's neck to weaken that area so Tanahashi is not at full strength, Tanahashi was working on Naito's knees. Everyone knows how bad Naito's knees are, and eventually Naito is going to retire. He said he's going to retire at 40. He wants to be champion before then or maybe on then. Who knows that they're going to give him the championship title before or when he turns 40. By the way, he turns 40 this year in November, so that's only a couple months away. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what New Japan gives Naito. So Tanahashi focuses on Naito's knees by doing a lot of dragon screws and a lot of attacks towards the knees that also include the ropes. Naito is in pain at this point, but he does try to make a comeback. He manages to take three sling blades and an ace is high. But as Naito prepares to do Destino on Tanahashi because Naito thinks that he has Tanahashi already weakened, that Tanahashi counters Destino and does a flash pin and manages to pick up the one, two, three and shocks Naito, shocks the crowd. And Tanahashi is enjoying his victory and his two points in the G1 Climax 32. Naito cannot believe this at all. They have this cute little moment in the corner of the ring where Tanahashi is talking to Naito and it seems like one of those haha good one you got one up on me it was a fantastic classic match between the two all right ladies and gentlemen that has been my review for the G1 Climax 32 night 5 July 24 2022 If you enjoyed this review, make sure to like, comment, share, tell a friend. Let them know that Marie Shadows covers professional wrestling. Let them know that Marie Shadows covers New Japan Pro Wrestling. And if you are new listening to the Square Circle Podcast, thank you for tuning in and listening anyway. And for everyone that has been part of this journey ever since, thank you anyway. I highly appreciate it. I appreciate all the support and love. If you are new, make sure to sign up at marieshadows.substack.com to get daily wrestling news, podcasts, live streams, wrestler interviews, and a lot more goodies directly to your inbox every single day at 10 a.m. Everything is original. There is no copy and paste. So signing up to marieshadows.substack.com helps me out greatly with all of my content. As always, follow me on Twitter at Marie underscore shadows. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows, where we talk about wrestling, play video games, have fun, have a chill out session, and we watch wrestling together as a community. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to an episode of the Square Circle podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows, covering fully the G1 Climax 32. And I'll see you guys in the next one.